Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm Tony Torrance. Today we're going to tie a slump buster variant, uh, which just means a variation of uh, Barr's slump buster. It's been a wonderful fly to uh, catch rainbows in our local streams. Streamer fishing uh, is a lot of fun and a lot of people are getting into it with the two hand rod. So give this pattern a try. I'm sure you're going to like it. I've got some uh, 10 or 80 thread here. This is Vivis Black. I'm just going to work back to where we're going to lay the tail in. <clears throat> and I don't know. I always, you know, I, I usually tr try to go about twice the length. So let's just, where is it? No, it was, I like to go a little over length of the, of the hook shank on these. And fouling can be a problem and if that you start running into that just shorten the tail up a little bit. The other thing you can do is put a little short clump of uh, crystal flash under the tail, trim it back and it'll just something stiff to set underneath the tail at a short distance there. Okay so I'm going to tie that in and then you would uh, you can put some super glue on your thread and wrap it there as well if you want to. Okay I'm going to go ahead and finish covering my shank here. Okay, I'm going to move my thread right back to the base of this pine squirrel. Again, that's um, just a pine squirrel strip. And you can make this pattern any color. I'm just choosing to do a little sculpin color combo. Um, the natural's good. They have a crawfish color that's good. Black, brown, I mean, there's a ton of different colors. Okay, so I've got my loop. I'm going to put a little bit of wax on my thread. And then my composite loop that we built here just a few minutes ago. I'm going to get that laid in there. So I've got my uh, materials in my loop here. I'm just going to straighten them out. So I'm going to give my twirler a spin here and get that just where it's starting to lay down. Then I'm going to take my Velcro brush and just gently pick it out a little bit. Guys, you can use needles, you can use um, your bodkins, whatever works for you to do this. There's a different technique um, all over the place. Everybody has their own way of doing it. And this worked for me. So then I spin it up a little bit more and go through it again. And that's the final turn. Just kind of pick that out. And then I start wrapping. And the rotary feature when you're doing this is really nice. I just failed to set it up now and we're into this. So we're just going to go ahead and muddle through. And normally I'd be picking and preening all the way up, but But we will, believe me, we will scratch out all these materials and get them looking good. Tie that off. And then I'm going to take my brush again and get all this raked out. Okay, so that's in there and I'm kind of spreading materials down. I'm going to bring my squirrel over here. Trim this just a little bit, get it out of my way. And tie that off right as close as you can get it to the cone. You can see that just laying there and I'll just push that little flap right up underneath the cone with my scissors and then wrap up on it. I'll secure that in real well. Now you can put a rib in this if you want to and go through all that trouble, but honestly if you put a piece of a little bit of super glue at that juncture where you tie down 
the tail itself. So now we're going to go ahead and make a, another loop. A little bit of wax. Whatever wax you use that you like. This just happens to be cobbler's. Now I've got, you take a strip of that pine squirrel and you lay it in a clip of some, this is Petagene's clip, you can use lots of different things. <clears throat> Trim off the, um, the skin, the hide, and then I'm just going to lay this in this loop. Give it just a little tightening up. Make sure everything, yeah, everything's where it needs to be. And we'll spin that for a little bit. And again, I, this I brush out too, just in case any fibers have gotten trapped. Give it one final twist, and then I'm going to start laying this as a collar. And try to do it nice and neat, and it goes right up in there. Okay, and I'm going to run a couple loops around that, bring that up taut, bring it back, go over again, snip that. And now, all I've got to do here is use a little bit of um, zap a gap on the thread again. This works real nice with these cones because you're getting everything finished tying down and you're laying the glue in there at the same time and just works nicely. Okay. Trim that thread. And there you have a little sculpt and slump buster with a composite loop belly.